<laughs> Alright guys, today I'm going to cover a video I've been thinking about for a while and this video has to do with knives and market prices. This is not a video about flippers. If you want to know how I feel about that, I'll tell you up front. I feel like uh, the market is a capitalistic market. The market will bear what it will bear. And if you, we don't pay into that market, then the prices will decrease. If you don't pay twice what a knife is worth, then people won't be able to sell it for twice what the knife is worth. It's just my personal opinion. But what the video is about is paying market or asking price for a knife uh, and when I think that that is a, a, a reasonable thing to do and when I when I don't necessarily think that's a reasonable thing to do. Now I've got a few examples of knives out here on the table. Um, this right here is a Strider SNG Fatty. I picked this one up at Blade Show this year. I've seen this, this knife go for as high as $800 plus. Dollars. Um, I've seen it go for as low as four hundred dollars i think one of my friends got a deal for four hundred even um i i you know i've got another knife in my pocket that i can pull out this is a um my z-wear strider which you guys have seen five million times um it's also a knife that is not, is pretty limited they didn't make a lot of them these knives sell for five six seven hundred dollars Honestly, I, I wouldn't pay those prices for it. Uh, one, one reason why I wouldn't pay those prices for this particular example over here is most people don't thrash on their knives and tool steel really thrives when you're gonna really push that knife and beat on it and use it and beat it up. If you're not gonna do any of that um, non-knife stuff, then S30V or whatever the, the most basic steel they have is gonna be more than fine. They use Peter's Heat Treat it's going to it's going to work perfectly fine for you um also i wouldn't necessarily go back and buy an older model um it, especially if you're not going to use that for its intended purposes that steel type for its intended purposes i'd buy the newer model they they've really upped the fit and finish things are, are a lot nicer um and the price is that not that much different than the retail price on one of these you know two, three, four years ago. So that's why I wouldn't really pay uh, a markup on these knives. Now, like I said, if there's just a specific knife that you just have to have and a, a specific steel that you just have to have, by all means, go ahead, jump in, buy it, do it, all that good stuff. I don't personally think it's worth it. I think a lot of people um, buy too much knife, so to speak, and they never really push it to its full potential. And they, they're overpaying in the process for the performance that they're getting. Um, next up is a TC Barlow. These knives, if you know anything about traditional knives, they're fairly hard to come by. They usually sell out on a uh, pre-sale. Um, you usually have to buy them on the secondary market. They usually, they've increased in price over the last few years. They were in the, you know, 100-ish dollar ballpark, 115 dollar ish ballpark. Now, they've started to creep up to 130 or so but if you want to pick one of these up on the secondary market especially when they first come out this is going to be a 220 250 300 knife i don't necessarily recommend paying that much money for these knives a one thing that charlie campagna the guy who commissions these knives has done is he does a lot of runs where he'll do a bunch of um knives in just one cover so that way people have a better chance of getting them second oops second the uh market is going to fluctuate so if you buy this knife as soon as it comes out on the secondary and you missed out on the on the uh, uh actual buying it from a retailer you're going to pay those super high prices if you turn around and you wait a few months uh maybe just even a month or so or you wait if you can a few years the prices are going to settle down. You might have something you can trade into one of these knives for. Um, somebody might just need to get rid of it. You, you might have somebody that has a knife. They don't really know exactly what it is. And you can get a good price. So I wouldn't necessarily jump out there and spend market value, initial market value for one of these knives for the same reason. Um, <clears throat> Emerson's. I've already covered this. Um, the only reason why I would buy one of these knives, and I did pay retail for this knife, uh, is if it was a limited edition knife or something that does not come out very often. As you guys know, this is a Mini A100, and the Mini A100 
is a discontinued knife. They've come out with two runs over the past two summers. So I would pay full retail for something like that. Otherwise, on the secondary, you can buy one of these knives and say $50 to $100 easily, very easily. Um, over here is a Northwoods knife. And I have sat out the last few runs. If you want to see why, go back and check my Northwoods videos and my Northwoods playlist. These knives usually come out. They sell very quickly. Uh, they usually are marked up as well. The prices have come down some, but I think the frenzy has kind of stopped. I either would try to buy one on the primary, which I don't plan on buying one until they settle out all the QC things, which hopefully they have with all of the new things they put in place at GEC. But I would also wouldn't pay full retail because two or three of the past four or so knives I've bought, like I said, go back and check my playlist. They've had things like this where the fit and finish is, is off. This, I believe, was a $150 traditional knife. That's unacceptable to me. Um, but again, that's why I wouldn't pay full retail for Northwoods knives. Over here, I've got my Rex 45 Paramilitary 2. This knife here is selling for over $200, round $200 on the secondary market. It cost $140, $150 initially. Um, Paramilitary 2s are notorious for being uh, marked up on the secondary market and only increasing and staying increased over time. The good part about it is they release lots of different paramilitary 2s and lots of different steels. And with that being said, <clears throat> they, they usually have a steel that's fairly comparable to the steel you missed out on if you missed out coming down the road. So I really wanted a Maximet Paramilitary 2. I missed out. Those knives are incredibly ridiculously priced. So I sat out and ended up picking up two of these, two different drops, two different uh, retailers. Like I said, I spent $140, $150. So I got two knives with a comparable steel to Maximet, ballpark speaking, gener generically speaking. Um, and I spent about the amount of money I would have spent on one Maximet, two, Maximet Paramilitary 2. So if I was gonna buy a knife and it's a, a sought after knife, like some of these are just examples of sought after knives, I would, I would kind of weigh my options. I would see if there is a situation where there's gonna be another model coming out that's comparable. I would see if there is a um, chance to buy it cheaper on the secondary. I would see if it's something that I really needed that particular model or if I could do better with something else or if I could swap something else in. Uh, that being said, that's my standpoint on buying knives at secondary market cost. I, I used to buy knives all the time at secondary. Matter of fact, I wish I would have brought out one of my traditional knives, one of my other traditional knives. I've got a split back Whittler that's a perfect example, 38 split back Whittler. I paid top dollar for that knife because they don't make them anymore. It doesn't seem like they're gonna make them anymore and you hardly ever see them on the secondary market. In those cases, if you really want something, of course, obviously, everybody's gonna say buy it. I just think that if you, if you kind of think about the knife before you buy it, think about your use, think about the secondary market and the fluctuation, think about is there gonna be another one coming out um, that's comparable, and, and you can kind of avoid some of the heartache of overspending and then kind of looking back and kicking yourself in the behind. God knows we've all done it before. I know I've done it several times, especially when I got into Striders, so. Um, just, just sharing my experience with you guys. Love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. Appreciate you guys watching. Remember, a lazy man carries a dull knife.